What's going on guys, John Kelly here, and today we're talking about five tips that I wish I would have known as a beginner backpacker. And tip number one goes all the way back to the very beginning, and that's when you're buying your big three. Your backpack, your sleep system, and your shelter system. Always buy the backpack last. Now understand, this is my personal view on this. This isn't necessarily God's truth when it comes to backpacking, but what I will tell you is it's much better to go ahead and buy your sleep system, buy your tent, know what you have there so you know how big of a backpack you're actually going to need. You may buy a sleeping bag and uh, a sleeping pad and a pillow and uh, this awesome tent and find out they're ultra light, super small, and you need a smaller backpack than you thought. Or because of financial constraints, maybe you're gonna buy something that's a little bit bulkier, touch heavier, and you need to buy a backpack that has a little bit better frame that kind of helps with the weight. And maybe it's just a little bit larger in volume. Those things are important to know. If you buy the backpack first, it limits what you can buy when it comes to your shelter and your sleep system. When you get into backpacking, you realize really quick you need to have an insulated jacket. And the typical insulated jacket that we all go for is a down jacket. We want something that's easily compressible, really warm, but also lightweight. But what if you live in an area with a lot of rain, in an area that's really, really humid and there's a lot of moisture in the air, is down really the best option? Tip number two is, if you live in an area that's really humid, has a lot of moisture in the air, a lot of rain, synthetic is a much better choice than down. The reason for this is simple. Down, when it gets wet, compresses. What that means is those little feathers, they, they kind of flay out. I don't even know why I just did that, sorry. Those feathers get all fluffed out and there's a lot of air that can get trapped in that area. And the higher fill power of down, the less feathers are needed to produce heat or to insulate uh, the person wearing the jacket. And once those feathers get wet, it doesn't matter if it's a 950 fill or if it's a 650 fill, those things are gonna go flat and they are not going to insulate. That's where synthetic jackets really come in handy. Synthetic materials like Apex, they don't compress in the same way that feathers do. But in wet weather, in weather where it's really moist in the air, that jacket's gonna keep you a lot warmer than a down jacket. It really depends on where you live. Don't just think that down is the answer for everything because in some situations, it really isn't. Definitely check out synthetic jackets if you live in one of those more humid, wet areas. Something else I wish I would have known early on when I started backpacking was to scout out my water sources before I got on trail. Now, for those of us who've been backpacking for a long time, this makes a ton of sense. Of course, you're gonna scout out your water supplies. That's the most important thing you can do when you go out on a trail. But as a beginner, when I started planning trips, I didn't really think about scouting out where those areas were. I remember hiking through the Sheltoe Trace and passing by like this really small little creek and thinking there's another water supply coming up ahead, I'll be okay. I got up to where that water supply was supposed to be and it was a trickle of water that I could barely get anything from. It was pretty much dried up and I hadn't scouted ahead of time to make sure I knew that the water supplies were gonna be what they needed to be. When I say scouting, I'm not saying looking at a map and seeing where water sources are, because you can't always trust those. What I'm saying is, especially if it's a popular trail, get online. There are, there are groups for almost every major trail in America. You can get on there and ask people who have hiked that trail, are the water sources dried up? Um, are there water sources I don't know about or should know about? This will protect you big time when you're out there hiking. The last thing you wanna do is get out there and find out that you are nowhere near water and that you're gonna have to hike miles and miles and miles before you get to it. Knowing how many water supplies and what kind of containers you need to bring with you for that water is vital when you go on a backpacking trip. Make sure you don't find yourself dehydrated when you're out on trail. Now, while we're on the subject of water, something else that is a great tip to have is make sure your water is easily accessible as you're hiking on trail. If you're like me and you've got hobbit arms, 
Like you're built more like Frodo or Bilbo Baggins than some player from the NBA, and you really struggle to get a bottle out from behind your backpack. It's wise to make sure you have a way to access your water while you're hiking so you don't have to stop. Take your backpack off, set it down, and pull out your water or have to ask somebody else to get your water for you. It's more efficient on trail to be able to drink as you're hiking than to have to stop every single time you get a drink. Also, if your water is easily accessible, that means it's gonna encourage you to drink more water. One of the biggest problems that most hikers have is they just don't drink enough water while they're hiking. If it's easily accessible, you're going to probably drink more water. Some people really like those bladders where they have the straw that comes out that they can sip from. And other people just like to have water bottle holders on their shoulder straps. For me personally, since 2018, I've been using the shoulder pouches. I started out with a Justin's UL, which I really liked that one. I also have a chicken tramper one that I use and another one that I have from Waymark. All three are fantastic. All three do a great job and they make my water easily accessible when I'm on trail. I can't emphasize enough how important hydration is when you're backpacking, but having easy access to that water makes you more cognizant, more aware of the fact that you need to drink and you will drink more often if you do that. So if you're somebody like me who struggles reaching in behind and getting those bottles, have something near the front of you where you can get that water, take a sip, and be able to keep yourself hydrated on trail. Tip number five, backpacking chairs are absolutely worth the wait. Now, I know this is a little bit controversial. If you're a long distance hiker and ultra lighter, you probably think I'm out of my mind right now, but I'm gonna promise you, you take a backpacking chair with you two or three straight trips, you may never go without it again. For me personally, I get done at the end of a long day of hiking. I don't wanna sit on the ground, I wanna sit in a chair. Now understand, there are two different kinds of backpackers. There's hikers and there's campers. Hikers are concerned about the lightest weight, most comfortable carry that they can have when they're hiking out on trail because they're trying to knock out miles. At night, they're probably not making a campfire, they're probably getting back to camp, making food, some small talk and go to bed. Whereas people who like the camping part a little bit more are thinking not crazy long miles during the day, but get to camp, sit, relax, hang with your buddy, start up a fire, have some food and just laugh. There is a balance between the two, but I will tell you, I've met very few people that took a camp chair on more than one or two trips that doesn't carry it with them pretty much on every single trip. I wish I would have known from the very beginning that bringing that camp chair with me would have made the camping experience way more enjoyable for me when I get out on trail. And I promise you, you get one of those chairs out there, you're probably gonna feel the same way. One more bonus tip real quick, and it's a simple one. Regardless of whether or not you have a YouTube channel or Instagram or TikTok or any of that stuff, take pictures, take video while you're on trail. It's exciting to be out there and to be in nature, but it's awesome to get home and be reminded of how great it was, only making you to want to go out more. Having those memories and being able to share those with your family and your friends also encourages them to get out there as well. Let's be honest. As backpackers, we would love it if our families and our friends were all able to go out there and do that with us because backpacking is such an amazing experience. Getting out into nature, getting out in God's creation and enjoying what's out there for us to explore. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, give it the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it the thumbs down. I'm cool with it for the most part. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you find out anytime one of these videos drops. And until next time, stay strong, hike long, and I will catch you on the next go-round.